this might come in handy for some people. So let me walk you through this. Uh, if you hit the comma key on your keyboard, that goes into your light box. You might have a light box button up here in the upper left. I don't. Uh, go into your demo projects and you can load up this uh, water dragon. So I assume you've watched the Redshift render videos prior to this. Uh, so I'll walk you through really quickly. We have a light in here and this is just, this is a ZBrush light providing a rim light over here on this side of our little water dragon here. So when I move this light around, you're gonna see uh, that light update. So we're getting a light cast from this side over here and then we have our background turned on and we have this uh, loaded in. So as I change this lat long uh, and I've got it blurred out, uh, that's providing lighting on this side of the model. Uh, if I continue down, we have plastic assigned to our water dragon body. And then over here, you know, I have a little bit of metalness turned up uh, for this as well as reflection. You know, I've got a little bit of shiny reflection dialed in. Now, the reason I'm doing all this setup is if we go down here to our renderer, uh, well, first we need to talk about which render are we using? We're going to be using the Redshift render and we are using a Redshift plastic material. Uh, you don't, I don't think you have to use a redshift plastic material or use a redshift material at all. You can use a matte cap or a standard material. But what we're going to essentially do is bake our material properties and our lights to our object as a poly paint. And then you can transfer that to your UVs. So let's walk through that process. Uh, so again, redshift render, we are, we're going to be using this renderer. So we're going to say redshift is turned on. So when we hit this BPR button or we hit shift R, that's going to render. Let's go ahead and do it. That's going to send this data over to Redshift and then it's gonna do a quick bucket render of our object. So again, right now we do have a poly paint applied. It's all painted, you know, light blue with little polka dots and stuff, but now we have lighting um, and material properties, the shininess and the reflectivity and uh, the rim light over here on our model as well. And we're gonna bake all of that onto the poly paint. If we just wanna see the poly paint, I'm gonna go ahead and move my viewport here. Uh, we can go to flat color material and with this material applied, this is just showing you your poly paint. No lighting baked in. So this is the poly paint as it is right now. Uh, and of course, if we turn off colorize, uh, if you remember from the earlier videos, that's going to show you, uh, you know, just the model. So if we go back here to our plastic material and we turn this colorize off, this is just the model. This is the model with a poly paint applied and with the lighting and material settings, everything that you see here is gonna be transferred to the poly paint of this object. How we do that is under Redshift Renderer, we have a Redshift Baker. Uh, essentially the longitude and latitude steps is it's gonna go do, 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 in this direction, capture or project uh, the lighting and material information onto your poly paint from this direction. And then it's gonna go around in this direction. You'll see in just a second. You can play around with many of these settings. You can hold down control and it'll give you more uh, as you're hovering over these menu items, it'll give you more info. I'm just going to go ahead and keep these uh, defaults for now. And let's go ahead and again, like I said, transfer. If I go back here to our flat color, all this poly paint information is going to now inherit material and lighting information. So let's watch that in action. Uh, but of course, first, make sure you're, um, you know, in this case, we have a plastic material uh, assigned that we want to uh, transfer this material property to our poly paint. So all you got to do is set up your scene. Uh, the lights and the materials the way you want. Go in here and hit the Redshift Baker button. And that's going to go through and like I said, do renders uh, from a bunch of different views to transfer this data to your object. All right, and now that that's done, uh, we can see that the poly paint has uh, been applied. If we go back into our flat color, you're going to see instead of having just the uh, poly paint on the body. Now we have lighting baked in. It's kind of confusing to see because this scene is being lit uh, appropriately. So it kind of looks right. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this out of the scene and put it into another one to make it more obvious. Uh, so let's go back to our plastic material here. You'll also notice down here on this micro poly, if we alt tap, um, like say the blanket micro poly here, all you got to do is go in here underneath geometry, dynamic subdivision. This micro poly is applied. If we turn that off, you'll see the actual objects themselves got the poly paint baked correctly. Um, it's just the micro polys uh, causing it to render a little bit weird. So we'll go ahead and turn that off for now. Uh, if you wanted to come back to this scene and change your lighting and rebake it, you can go in here to file, save as, and we'll just dump this right onto our desktop here as well as we can also go in here, any render properties that you wanted to save, you can go in here to render, save. Uh, but in this case, we'll be fine. So what I'm gonna do is go up here to Preferences, Initialize ZBrush. What that'll do is give us a brand new 
uh, scene uh, with ZBrush set up where it just has a default light, no background or no dome light in here, no HDR image providing lighting. So now if I go in here and I say load tools from project and we go to our desktop, this is just gonna, it's not gonna load in the Z project with all the light and material setting. It's just gonna load in the Z tool of this uh, object here. So if I drag this out, now you're going to see, uh, it's a little bit dark because it's applying my startup material. So we'll go through here and again, uh, it doesn't really matter what material, I'm just gonna do, you know, we'll do a ZBrush basic material and go in here to our material settings. We're gonna crank that diffuse curve up a little bit so you can see a little bit better. And now you're going to see all of that lighting and shininess has been baked in uh, to this object. In fact, if I switch back to the flat color, you're gonna see very well, this is not lighting. In fact, if I move this light around, you're gonna see there's no lighting updating on this object. Nothing's changing because again, we have the flat material and our lighting is baked into our poly paint. To illustrate this as well, we can go in here to, or at least this, has, this model has UV. So I go in here, if I, if I morph my UVs, and go into solo mode here, you're gonna see this is the UVs uh, for the body laid out. So what I can do is, again, this is being applied to our poly painted objects. If I go in here to poly paint, and when I, if I wanted to, I could go in here to adjust colors. You know, and I can go through here and I can hue shift this or you know change the intensity or the contrast if I wanted to. Another thing I can do that's kind of interesting, we can go in here to Z plugin, it might be useful. Uh, go to ambient occlusion, uh, you can hit compute. That will mask ambient occlusion on this object. So if I control tap to invert that, it's going to unmask the areas where the ambient occlusion is. And then I can choose a dark color and say color fill object. That'll kind of give us a little oomph in the ambient occlusion areas of this object here. In fact, if we're gonna do that for the body, let's go back in here to our Z plugin and we're gonna turn on occlusion volume. So that'll take into account all of the objects. And then we'll compute again. I'm gonna control tap to invert our mask, or you could go into masking and click that invert button. And then again, with our occlusion areas unmasked, choosing a dark color. In fact, we'll do a dark blue this time. And so we'll say color, fill object, control drag to unmask. And now we've baked in ambient occlusion along with our baked in lighting, uh, Fred Shift 360 Baker. And again, it looks totally lit, like it has a material that's kind of shiny and it's being lit from this side. We have a flat material assigned. There is no material information on here. Again, if we go down here and choose basic, now we have uh, an actual material on this object. So if we want to transfer our poly paint to a texture map, we can go in here to texture map, create new from poly paint. And now you can see if I hover over this, one side of the body's dark, one side of the body's light. It's a little bit shiny. All of that lighting and material information, like I said, has been transferred to the poly paint. And now we just transferred it to a texture map. So if we want to export this out of ZBrush, all we got to do is say clone texture, go up here to our texture map, uh, our texture menu, have it selected and say export. And we'll just say JPEG. And there we go. Now we can see our entire color map has all of, again, all of that information baked in uh, to our object. Uh, you can use this as a starting point and then go in and manually, you know, put in brush strokes or update the lighting or, you know, however you want to use this, uh, you know, feel free. Uh, but this is an easy way to kind of bake in a little bit of ambient occlusion, bake in a little bit of lighting, bake in a little bit of material properties uh, to get a very robust color map that you can use on your projects. Again, if you want to continue exporting this uh, JPEG without cropping, uh, you can say OK, and that will dump it right out on our desktop. If we go look at it, you know, again, there is our color information transferred to a texture map from our poly paint that was baked in by Redshift.